Hello. Welcome back to Kingdom Minded Thinkers. Let us prepare for this Sunday, Lord's will. So this is your April 24th, 2022 Sunday school lesson. And the topic and title is woman of Samaria. Before we get started, let us have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord. And Lord, I ask you to bless every Sunday school teacher, every student, Lord. And Lord, bless me also, God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, allow this word to penetrate the hearts and minds of your people. And Lord, let it just be food to a, a person that's hungry, water to a dry place. And Lord, help us to all grow and change and do better, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so... um. I decided to teach you about the word on today. Uh, topic and title again is woman of Samaria. All right. So, um, definitely want to say welcome aboard to all the new followers. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to, uh, hit the subscribe button and let us know that you are enjoying the content here, uh, on, on this channel. All right. So, um, continue to share God's word and please feel free to indulge and conversate with us and let us know that you're out there and that you agree and that you've had an experience or whatever you'd like to share uh, on the page respectively. All right, so let's dive right into it, the Bible truth. And I'll try not to be before you guys long. Uh, and we're going to do it a little different tonight, but just for tonight only, possibly. Uh, we're going to read the scriptures first before we get into uh, the, the sections of the Sunday school book. All right, so if you go to the Bible truth, God's love and gift of salvation is for all people. Not just some folks, but all people. And so, uh, before we get into it, uh, just think about how the Samaritans were like uh, a mixed breed. Well, let's look at people that we have today. And all of us got a little something mixed in us, whether we know exactly what it is or not. Your great, 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 great grandma may be uh, Hispanic or African American or, or Caucasian or Chinese or Japanese. It doesn't matter. God offers and he extends salvation to us all. That's good news. All right, so um, it's coming out of the book of John, chapter 4. It's going to go verses 17 through 15, then verses 23 through 26, then 28 through 30. But it's good to go ahead and go to the book of John, start from the beginning, and then read all the way through or let your Bible app read to you uh, as I did. All right, so verse 7. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which I am a, Samar I am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And that's what this is mainly about as well. Before we continue on and get into the lesson and, and the meat of it. And oh, what a good time we are going to have. Because we see a lot of this going on right now with, um, you know, this person. Where we don't have that to do with them. Or this, that, and the other, and so forth. But anyway, uh, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God. And who it has that, and who it is that saith to thee, "Give me to drink," thou wouldest ask, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. And that it, that when he said living water, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. All right. So the woman said unto him, "Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, uh, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water?" All right, so it goes to uh, 
verse 12, and then we'll go on to 15, uh, with that first part of 7 to 15. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall, thir shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I may not never, I may not neither come hither to draw. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such <clears throat> to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that uh, Messiah is cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us of all things. Jesus saith unto her, That I speak unto thee, I am he. The woman went left. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith unto men, unto the men. <clears throat> yeah, excuse my voice. Come and see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. All right, may God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. All right, so quickly go into the um, Sunday school book um, to the section where it says light on the word. And I'll turn there in mind as well. All right, so it's talking about Jesus, and it's giving you a little bit. If you go back to John 4, starting at the beginning, it kind of gives you a little run-through of what's going on here. Jesus has been traveling, and so he's kind of tired, so he's been traveling and preaching and, and done this for many days. And so you can just imagine us, if we had been traveling by on foot, y'all, walking to go and spread the word of God and how exhausting it would be to be traveling miles and miles and miles just to get to a place and 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 then got to get up and preach and teach uh maybe that same day i'm not sure if it was the next day or what but you can imagine how uh exhausting that can be if one had to walk everywhere to teach and preach the word of god thank god we do have vehicles now <clears throat> That's why he said greater works than this we're going to do. We got vehicles now. We got airways now. We can just fly places if, you know, if necessary. And then we also have by phone, by social media. Uh, we got all these great avenues to travel, teach, and preach the word of God. So there is no excuse for not getting on to uh, with what God has called you to do with spreading the gospel. And that includes me too. Even if you got to lose a little bit of sleep until the next day. God's word is important if you can if you can make it. Now, now don't go so to the point where I had to teach the word and I drove into a tree. Now that ain't what God's saying. Uh uh. All right, so <clears throat> Jesus was poor and journeyed on foot. He became fatigued, y'all. He got a little hungry. You imagine somebody being a little famished. So he was fatigued. And which this reveals, this lets us know, this is proof, this is something that reiterates what we already knew, that he was fully God, but yet fully man. He come to die for the sins of the world, so he had to come in human form and human flesh. So he became a son of man. So this lets us know that he was human at that time before he went back to the Father. The road to Samaria was accessible. All right, so, but it was, uh, but the, but the country was full of hills and mountains, which required great energy to climb. So um, it's one thing to be just traveling on ground. But if you got the up and down the hills and, and got to climb over this and that and the other and so forth, you can just imagine how much more uh, <laughs> energy it's going to take just to get over the mountain or just to get around a, a, a big hill or whatever. And so he had to have strength to do that. Jesus was headed to Galilee. Now, he left Judea because the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was baptizing more than uh, more disciples than John was. Now, even though 
it points out that Jesus, these were his disciples. They was like, well, you baptizing more than John. They his disciples. Of course, he's going to be doing the baptism. All right. So, um, <clears throat> you know how people want to try to stop you when you're doing something good. That's just man for you. But anyway, turn in the uh, section of your book to Samaria. All right, so this country is located north of the Dead Sea, uh, west of the Jordan River. Uh, the land is difficult uh, for travel. The, the land is difficult. And the reason why it's difficult is travel, uh, full of mountains, deep cracks in the, earth, in the earth and valleys. So this makes it hard for somebody to travel through if you know you don't know what you're gonna step into. You got to be careful. Not only that, you got it's times to travel if you don't know the roads and the 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 the, the curves, the the cracks that's in the earth that the, in the valley areas, and you just walking, you might be done fail and hurt yourself. So you got to travel in the daytime. I, I I presume that that's the time that they travel in and, and rested at night. All right, so the. Well, where Jesus met the woman of Samaria was in the town of Shekar, near a plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. The well is often known as Jacob's well. Now, I want to point out something that I found in the, in the Sunday school uh, when I was reading about the, uh, met, the when the woman went, met Jesus at the well, and it talks about it being referred to as Jacob's well. Um that was like a sacred thing and holy, you know, but when Holy Spirit come in, it, we become that reiterated part where people, when they come to see us, when, when they see the, the, what's on the inside of us, which is Holy Spirit, we become that, that, that holy place because Holy Spirit is living on the inside of us. Amen. All right. So the, the Samaritans and the Jews hated each other. Do we see that now? Yes, we do. We see a lot of hatred. And you can even ask some folks, why do you hate them? And, you know, why do they hate you or whatever the case be? And they don't have a real legitimate answer. They just know just because. Maybe somebody, grandma, hated somebody else, grandma. And this is a ongoing thing from 20 centuries ago. And so this just this family and this family, just family feud. And so it's just an ongoing thing. And so we see that right now there's nothing new under the sun people so when we see things that's going on there's nothing really that's shocking or surprising because this is nothing new under the sun the samaritans hated it and the jews they did not get along and why because the samaritans were like a mixed breed and you know we have uh and over here in america we are the melting pot that's what a lot of people call us because we have a lot of mixed breed and when you think you pure this and pure that you trace uh oh it was one um uh, website that you go to you trace it and they give you ancestry.com thank you lord you trace their what uh, uh your, your heritage on your on your on that website you're gonna be so surprised at what you see that's in your gene pool and need i remind you that all of us came from god and when he breathed the breath of life into adam and he became a living soul we are descendants of him and eve so all of us came from the bloodline. That's why we are able to um, reiterate that just because you are a certain skin color or just because you came from this tribe of people, that doesn't mean that you've been counted out. That doesn't mean that you've been excluded. Jesus came to save anybody that's ready. Whosoever will, let him come. So that's what we are on here to explain to you as well. Don't let somebody tell you and, and look, it may be some folks out here that's teaching people this, that you can't come in the kingdom because you're a certain color. Come on, we need to get off that stuff because that's not how God operates. God didn't create a certain set of people just for them to die. He gave us all free will and free chance to make it in. All we have to do is choose life and avoid death. And when I say death, I don't mean like literally like dying. 
because everybody has to make that appointment. I mean, being separated from God, because that's death. That's the second death. That when you are completely separated from God, that's death. And, and it's because you'll never get to talk to him or, or be in his presence or be in his love. That's that's like a, a, a great separation that, that you just don't want. Because it can never be put back together again once you leave this side. We got to make sure everything we got on the inside of us is right. So we got to accept people for whatever race they are, from whatever tribe they come from. If they, if, if you got Kojic, you got Baptist, and then you got um, Pentecostal. All of us are trying to pull people to go the same way. And that's letting you know that Jesus Christ, he's the one that came to save your life. So you need to turn your life into over to him today. That's what this is all about. He's, you know, he, he wants to give you that living water. Amen. Didn't mean to go on, along that way, but somebody needed it somewhere. I'm pretty sure. And <clears throat> it's a good thing to share with your students in the Sunday school, uh, let, uh, classroom. All right. So, um, where were we? Yeah. The well where Jesus met the, the woman of Samaria was in the town of Shakar near a, a plot. Um, I think I read that a while ago, but I'll read it again. Uh, of ground that Jacob had given his son, Joseph, the well is often known as Jacob's well. The Samaritans and the Jews hated each other, so it was not safe for Jews to travel through Samaria. We see that now on the street corners as well. Some folks, you can't travel through there wearing certain colors because that's what they say is their territory. All right. Jesus uh, was on a road. Leading, he got on a road that was taking him straight through Samaria. Okay. He was traveling through. So he goes through an area where he, he you know, mistreatment may happen. Violence may come about. Maybe he's seeing a little bit of both. And, you know, he, him being the son of God. You know, he's, he's got the power of God on the inside of him. So he's going in and he's traveling down this road that people know not to go down if they, they are a Jew. But he goes and uh, travel this way. and But Jesus befriended the uh, Samaritan woman and showed her love and kindness. And how many of y'all know that love and kindness will kill evilness? It'll kill hate. It's like heaping coals on top of that individual's head. And so God wants us to show love and kindness because that's how we put out fires. Y'all Jesus extinguished the fire of hatred with the healing waters of love. That is, we got to start showing more love. We got to start spreading love instead of hate. When somebody hates you, don't hate them back. Show them love. Be that great example. Jesus was the perfect example of showing this. This woman was like, okay, how can you, um, now we don't know each other. I don't know what's wrong. You know, with, you know, if, if, okay, let's put it like this. If I seen somebody and let's say I'm a Jew and it's a Samaritan. We ain't never met each other before. I, I have no reason to judge the Samaritan. He or she has no reason to judge me, but because we belong to this certain group, we can't talk to each other. So just imagine how awful that would be. And is if somebody was still doing it, like, well, I can't talk to you cause you know, you ain't, you ain't no uh, Samaritan or you ain't no Jew. And so Jesus came to, to, to set it straight. If you a Samaritan, he come to save the Samaritans. If you a Jew, he came to preach to you as well. It doesn't matter what your top, your, 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 your label is, your title. Uh, Jesus came to save, you know, that's, that, that's the foundation of it right there. If you want to make it into heaven, bottom line is you must be born again. And you got to come to God through his son, Jesus Christ. And you need to be filled with the Holy ghost. He is the keeper. He's the reason why we are still here today. He's the reason why we want to continue to teach and preach his word. He's the reason why we want to do what's right. He helps lead us and guide us. He'll tell you, you know, that ain't of God. That ain't, that ain't how God operates. You don't need to babysit that. And you need to cast that thought down and you need to start thinking of righteousness. Start seeing the way God wants us to see. Um, I'm going to share something with you. My husband and I were sitting in the car the other day and, uh, he got a little teary at it, which kind of touched me. Uh, <clears throat> but I was really listening to him and he was doing an evaluation, um, on his life because we, well, we did, we watched the video that was posted in our, uh, church, uh, messenger chat. And the video had this young man 
that was speaking about the vision God had showed him. He had went to sleep, I think, and he was standing in the judgment, and it gave an evaluation. Just think of all the people that's going to miss heaven because they refuse to accept Jesus. That's going to be a terrible thing. So that's why you're going to see more. I mean, just start looking for it. You're going to see more of us out on the street corners. You're going to see more of us on the social media, on the telephone, in the, the jail houses, in the, the homeless shelters, and so forth. Teaching and preaching the word of God, trying to introduce people to Jesus, telling them about the goodness. But when we do it, we do it with excitement because we he's, he's living, he's alive. Even though he's not here physically, he's here spiritually and he's yet alive. And he's, we, he's our go-to, our in-between. We call on him and he answers prayer. He doesn't just sit there and look and just wait. No, he answers when we call on him. All right. Okay. So. There were some things that come about. Jesus was put in some, uh, go to the, oh yeah, living water. Jesus was in a unique, in a unique circumstance. His name was uh, ringing because of the miracles he had performed. And you know, people, when they see you got a gift, they follow your gift. And a lot of them, they'll follow your gift until, you know, they get ready to fall off. But they were following him because of the miracles that he had performed. Now, um, the disciples were constantly surrounding him. So at this time they go off to go get something to eat so they can come back and feed him. And then, uh, he, now he's alone. So he's at this well and this Samaritan woman comes up and let us remember that she don't go. She's unclean. She don't go to the well while everybody else is getting, you know, their, their drinks. She goes in the heat of the day because of her situation. And what is her situation? A bed of sin. She has had multiple husbands, you know. And so with that being said, she comes at a time where, you know, she, she, she don't want to be uh, persecuted or ridiculed because that just don't feel good. It didn't feel good back then is what it's showing, and it don't feel good now. But we all going to go through something. But don't give them something to talk about. She gave them something to talk about. So Jesus lets us know even in that if you look at it this way, no matter what sin you've committed, thank you, God. No matter what situation you done found yourself in, if you want to come to Christ, if you want to clean up, if you want him to change your life, you have a chance. Just as long, you know, it, it just it, it, make sure that you don't blaspheme. Speak against the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody, because he said he won't forgive you in this world or the world to come. If you hadn't done that, then, honey, you got a chance. Amen. All right, so the disciples were constantly surrounding him, and now he is alone at the well with the Samaritan woman. Three reasons why the woman was shocked. Number one, Jews did not start conversations with unknown women. They just didn't do that. And today, in this time, we need kind of some of that behavior because <clears throat> we got some folks that just go out and start conversations, and there it is. That's all I'm going to say. Number two. Jewish teachers did not host public discussions with, with women. And three, um, Jews and Samaritans hated each other. So there's, there's all this that's going on that the, the reason that this is like shocking to her, like it's breaking all ground rule, uh, all the ground, uh, rules and stuff here. Um, and so she's like, okay, I'm a woman, I'm a Samaritan and he's a Jew all these grounded rules that's been established, he, Jesus is breaking all those rules. So she's like, okay, what's really going on? Okay. And Jesus did something astonishing. He starts to talk to her and reveals to her, because it talks about it. He reveals to her uh, who he is. Um, he tells her that, you know, if you knew who I was, you would be asking me for something to drink. Paraphrasing, you know, like I'm, I'm God's gift that he, you know, the gift of God being sent to you, son of God, you know, and she tell them, you know, she let him know that they had already been, you know, waiting for the Messiah because they heard of him. People do that now. I know about God. I know about Jesus. I'm waiting on his return as well. And they'll cut you off. She didn't do that. But you have that now. Folks will tell you, well, I know about Jesus. I know he coming. I'm ready for him to come. And you know you ain't ready. You know good and well that you're not ready. 
for him to return because your house is not in order. The disciples were going to buy food. Jesus was at the well and was tired and thirsty. So the Samaritan woman comes up to get some water and Jesus asked her uh, for a drink. She questioned Jesus about asking her a Samaritan woman for something to drink. The Samaritans were a mixed breed of people, so they were not accepted because of it. Jesus replied metaphorically uh, to make her think more deeply when Jesus told her about not being thirsty again after drinking the water that Jesus had to offer. And that is again, talking about the Holy spirit. Jesus also said, if you had recognized God's gift, see, I got a little head of y'all, but here it is. And who this is that is saying to you, give me drink. You would ask him and he would give you, and he would give you living water. You know, when I hear that, um, I was discussing this with my children earlier. The living water is when we need something to come up, uh, up in our mind to help us with the situation that's at hand. Holy Spirit is there giving a scripture where it is coming. And it's like it's like a, a fountain of, of, of scriptures. It'll come up. And, it, and then you'll begin to say, okay, Lord, I, th and you'll recognize that this is the test or this is the answer to the problem. There is an answer for every problem in the word of God. Every, everything that we go through, we need help with. It's in the book. It's in the word of God. God left that here for us to lead example by, to follow these instructions so that we can make it to heaven, but also so that we can live on this side until he comes to get us so that we'll know how to behave ourselves. So we'll know how to act accordingly. So will know how to come and pass the test. Amen. So that's why when he, when we, when we talk about living waters, you know, that reminds me of the scripture. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. What's on the inside of you is going to come out. So whenever you're talking about God, whenever you, whenever fruitation becomes to, to the forefront of your lips about what God has done for you, what God can do for you. And then you tell everybody about what God is, is, is about to do in your life because God is setting you up for some things. But we also know that when we're talking about the Holy Spirit and what, 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 what comes out of us, it boils over sometimes we get so excited i don't know about you but i've been in positions where god has been ministering a word in my ear and i'm trying to go to bed and i'm really trying to go to sleep but the holy spirit is stirring me up and so i'm sitting there really trying to be quiet trying to be still and like okay i gotta go to sleep but i'm still being ministered to in my mind and i'm still hearing the word of god and i'm like okay this is really good and i i, I don't i'm I don't really get much rest that night because of the excitement that's going on and it's bubbling over. But I've been in that position before. So when it talks about rivers of living water, this is a, it's an ongoing thing. As long as you stay connected to the vine, as long as you stay connected to God, that river of living water shall continue to spring forth on the inside of you. And that's all you need to be complete. When, when he was, um, telling the, the disciples to fill the water to the brim when it was talking, when Mary had called for him and said that we, they had run out of wine and Jesus turned the water into wine. He, he filled it up to the brim so nothing else can come in because once Holy Ghost fills you up, that's all you need. You just need the spirit of God to live on the inside of you. All right. So, um, Jesus didn't, uh, Jesus didn't under, she didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. She was like thinking it's some kind of magical stuff. Like give me this water. So I'll never have to come down here and get this water out of this well in this hot place because it's hot now and hot in the heat of the day. Cause I can't come down here while they down here because I'm considered unclean, this, that, and the other, but that's not what Jesus was talking about, but that's what she was talking about. So she didn't really understand what he was saying when he said, he'll give you water that you'll never thirst again. She looking like, okay, it's some kind of water to keep me hydrated. I'll never be be thirsty again physically but that's not what jesus was talking about now it does talk about god as a spirit and we he, he who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth now and it, there was something that was um i was wanting to read to you guys to point out because um this stood out to me dearly because sometimes we think we know something and we don't or sometimes we know something and then it just gives you a deeper answer uh, or make you see it more clearly. Example, when my sister talked about uh, when she was talking about Jesus on the cross 
and she said that when he gave up the ghost because he had been separated from God, all that love and all that power, he was separated for a time. And even if it's just for a second, a second is too long and he could not bear it. So that's when the, he gave up the ghost. So, um, if you go to the section where it says the Messiah revealed and you skip down, it says, um, the true question about worship is not where, but how the time of true or genuine worship is now at hand because the Messiah is now at hand. The true worshipers genuinely understand that Jesus is the truth of God. So that's why when we call on Jesus, we praise him, we talk to him, we love on him. You know, we, we, we adore God and, and we, we welcome his son Jesus in and we accept him as our personal Lord and Savior. Savior. The Father wants people of this kind as his worshipers. They are worshipers in the spirit and in truth. To worship in spirit is to worship in a new way. Here it is. To worship in a new way revealed by God to humanity in Jesus. To worship in truth is to worship God through Jesus. True worship is offered through Jesus by the means of the Holy Spirit. True worship is in contrast with religious formalism, such as the of the Pharisees. The Father is seeking true worshipers because it is authentic, because of its authentic nature requires that worship be spiritual. This spoke to me and gave me a deeper understanding of something that I, I was like, okay, got to be telling the truth. Got, I mean, just it just opened up some more knowledge on me with worshiping because that's what we're here to do. True, uh, uh, and, and that basically was what my what the slide was talking about with this one. Okay, and the spirit is in a new way. True worshipers have, you know, that that authenticness. God gave you a unique praise, and that is because it's designed uniquely for you. That's what you give God praise and worship. And 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 look, can't nobody tell you how to praise your God when you really praising Him. Amen. Somebody, um, let everything be decent and in order, because <clears throat> some folks. Um, yeah. Anyway, whosoever will let him come. Jesus extends an open invitation to us all. It is of high importance for us to tell others of Jesus and do so with excitement. Let the excitement that the Samaritan woman had be an inspiration to us all. So it's talking about the excitement when she went and told everybody to come and see a man who told me about everything I've ever done. Who told pretty much basically saying who told me about myself. And you know, because Jesus had told, her, he said, Look, he said, Go get your husband. And she said, you know, she basically paraphrased, she's like, I don't, I don't have a husband. And he was like, Yeah, that's correct. Cause you didn't have five of them. And the one you with now ain't your husband. You know, and so he that 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 sparked that interest. And she became curious. Let us be curious about the word and get right after it. Let, let, let's be deep in, into wanting to know more about God and his ways and his knowledge and his wisdom and to be fed with, 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 with what he's telling us to be fed with as far as what we put in our bodies physically, spiritually, and emotionally, what we take in and so forth. All right. So his lifestyle, um, was the perfect example to us. Now her lifestyle was a mess. But Jesus was ready to help her just like he is ready to help you on today. All you got to do is be willing and ready. And Jesus will come in and he will dine and sup with you and he will change your life. He will change your 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 everything and everything will be turned around um, because you are a new creature now. Uh, old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new now. So you are new in Christ Jesus. And isn't that the good news? You don't have to die in sin. You don't have to be separated from God in an eternity. You don't have to be burning in a place of torment forever and never getting out. All you have to do is make that decision now that, that, that you're going to serve God and that you made Jesus your Lord and Savior and that he is the son of God. You make that choice and decision right now, my friend. And guess what? We welcome you into the kingdom. All right. So I love each and every one of you. And thank God for all of you that have tuned in and will tune in later on. Y'all be sure to share this video and please drop a comment below and keep us in prayer as we continue to pray for you. I'll talk to you all next time. Lord's will. Bye-bye.